This is a, a very powerful word uh, written by the Apostle John, and uh, I want to focus on one specific thing tonight, uh, and I want to talk to you about conquering the world. Amen. Conquering the world. Hallelujah. I don't know if, it, if you guys remember, there was a, an old cartoon that, that uh, used to come out, uh, I think it was a daytime cartoon, but it was called Pinky and the Brain. How many of you ever saw Pinky in the Brain, you know, and the brain is a, you know, a mouse with a big old brainiac head, and, and Pinky's a, you know, a, a dork, basically, and the, the way they started every show was, every episode was, what are we going to do today, Brain? <laughs> and he said, we're going to do the same thing we do every night. We're going to try to conquer the world, and so I want to speak to you tonight about conquering the world as Christians. Amen. I mean, God intends to give us the victory. Amen. Amen. And so let's read a couple of verses here in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 and 5. It says this. It says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Amen. Amen. I mean, oh, God wants to give us the victory. Amen. And here's the thing, is that every Christian can overcome the world. Amen. Can conquer the the world. This word overcome is a very interesting word. It literally means conquer. Uh, it's the Greek word nikos, N-I-K-O-S. And the picture, the imagery of this word is of an athlete who has gained the mastery in their sport. Amen. There's an acronym uh, that is, that's been used uh, uh, recently. It's, it's not new, but it's, it's been kind of out there. It's the word goat. He's the goat. You know what it stands for? It means greatest of all time. You know, and they use that to, to refer to several different people. One of them is, uh, is uh, uh, the quarterback, NFL quarterback, Tom Brady. And, you know, whenever you think of the, the Patriots or the teams that he's played for, uh, he is the only quarterback in the history of football to win seven Super Bowls. And so they call him the greatest of all time. Others have had the title, you know, Michael Jordan, uh, Muhammad Ali. But the point is, is that these were these were people who rose to mastery in their particular uh, sport in their field. And so when Paul uses this word, he's talking about everyday Christians. He said, "For this is," uh, he says, "for whatever." is born of God, overcomes the world. So if you are a Christian, you have been born of God. Amen. Amen. You have been 
You've been saved by, by grace, by the Holy Spirit. Uh, but in the, in the uh, Gospel of John, Jesus, or rather John writes, and he says, he says this in verse 12 and 13, but as, as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor, nor of the will of man, but of God. They have been born of God. Amen. They've experienced the new birth. Amen. And so if you have been born again, and you have the Holy Spirit living within you, uh, you have the ability to be, be a conqueror in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You have the ability to overcome the world. When you get saved, uh, how many know you enter immediately into a real life competition? It's a spiritual contest. It's a spiritual uh, a battle. When we're converted, we're put into direct uh, conflict with Satan's kingdom. That's right. why when somebody gets saved, there's an immediate reaction to them. Amen? There's an immediate resistance. There's an assault that comes upon them. Uh, you know, sometimes it's with, with temptations, you know, and Satan comes and he begins to try, try to get them back by by offering them things, amen. Uh, you know, uh, you know, if a person has an issue with with lust, they'll, you know, he'll offer them that. If they have a weakness for alcohol or drugs, uh, he's going to come at them on that angle. If they're if they're afraid of what people think of them, he's going to intimidate them with that. Oh, what are people going to say when they find out you're a Jesus freak? You see what I'm saying? That there's always a conflict, and, and it's different for everybody, but it's something that is immediate. He will try to knock you out immediately mm -hmm. with temptations, with trials, and try to derail you, try to keep you from going back to church. That's why we have to pray for people who come to the altars and, and, and give their lives to Christ, because Satan is working on them to keep them from coming back to church. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. It's true. He's trying to keep people away from God. Okay, and so here's the thing I want to encourage you with. You may be knocked down from time to time. When you're in a fight, you might get knocked down. Amen? You might take a, a shot across the chops, you know, and uh, you, you, your, your bell might be rung, and you might be seeing stars or little birds flying around, and, and you, you, you can... Be knocked down, but I'm here to tell you tonight that God gives us the power to get back up. Yeah. Amen. He gives us the power to, to not back off, but to keep on going forward. Amen. To press in. Listen to this proverb, Proverb 24, verse 16. It says, for a righteous man may fall seven times and rise again, yeah. but the wicked shall fall by calamity. Amen. A righteous man's going to keep getting back up. Hallelujah. You have the Spirit of God in you. You may fall. You may get knocked down. But I want to tell you something. You don't have to stay down. That's right. Because the Holy Spirit, God, uh, is inside of us to lift us up again. I want to say this, that you and I are overcomers because Jesus overcame. Amen. 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 In uh, John chapter 16, in the last verse of John 16, uh, you know, Jesus had been telling them that, that he was going to be taken. In verse 32 and 33, it says, Indeed, the hour is coming, yet it has now come that you will be scattered, each to his own end, will leave me alone, yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. He said, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Amen. Amen. He said, they're, they're going to come and take me. You're going to run away. He says, you're going to have tribulation in the world, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. That's pretty powerful for him to say that. Now, what's interesting about that is he said, when he said this, he hadn't overcome anything yet. At least, you know, what was coming up. Very soon he would be arrested. He would be falsely condemned, and then he would be executed as a criminal. And if you just look at this from a, a human 
perspective, it looks like he was not an overcomer, but like he was defeated. That's what it looks like. It looks like he was a loser. He doesn't look like an over overcomer. To all outward appearances, he was defeated. Because th that night he was arrested, he was dragged before the Sanhedrin, he was taken to Pontius Pilate the next day, and, and the following evening he was crucified. And he died. And he was buried. And so, from all outward appearances, it looks like he was not an overcomer or a conqueror, but it looks like he was a failure. So, so why did he say, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world? And I'll tell you why, because Jesus spoke by faith. Amen. Amen. He spoke by faith. It reminds me of Abraham when he had to go take his son Isaac and, and, and take him up to the town to uh, the top of Mount Moriah and sacrifice him there. And he told his servants there at the base of the mountain, he says, stay here and we will return to you. And they're going up the mountain and Isaac is carrying the, the wood and his, his father has the fire and the knife and Isaac's like, uh, Dad, yes? He says, uh, we have the wood and the fire and we have the knife, but where's the sacrifice? He didn't know he was the sacrifice. And his father said, God will provide himself a sacrifice. And we know how that all worked out, right? God provided a sacrifice, but when Abraham spoke those words, he didn't know it. But he spoke by faith. He said, I am the lad will come back to you. He said, God will provide a sacrifice. And God did exactly what Abraham said. He had faith in God. Jesus had faith in God. He was not on top of the world at this time. When he said those words, he was not... Uh, you know, uh, conquering. He was not victorious. In fact, you could you could say he was losing the battle. But here's the thing: he spoke by faith because he believed in and trusted in his Father. Amen. He had told his disciples, "They're going to take me. They're going to crucify me. I'm going to be buried, but I'm going to rise again." He told them that. They didn't know what he was talking about. But it was his faith in God that saw him through. And I want to tell you uh, tonight that it is our faith in God that will see us through. Amen. What did that scripture say? It said, for this, uh, it says, for whatever is born of God has overcome the world, has conquered the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Amen. Who is he who overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Amen. It's our faith in the Lord God. It's our faith in Jesus Christ that is going to see us through. Jesus knew that if that when it was all said and done, that he would be victorious. He knew that at the end of the day, God was going to raise him from the dead. He believed it. He had faith in, in the word of his father. He believed that his father was not a liar. And his father did raise him from the dead. Amen. I want to tell you something. Anyone who dies in their faith will win in the end. In other words, if you go to your grave with your faith intact, you win. Amen. You you are an overcomer. You are going to uh, have the victory. See, the world's idea of success is not the same as success in the kingdom of God. That's right. In the world, it's uh, it's you know whoever gets the richest, you know whoever has the most fame, whoever has the most followers, you know, uh, or the most friends. There's an old saying that says, "He who dies with the most toys wins." And somebody, somebody made up a saying to go with that uh, from a Christian perspective. And that is, he who dies with the most toys still dies. Amen? Amen. Jesus put it this way, Mark 8, 36. What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? 
Amen. You know, Jesus, he set an example for us, for Christians of every generation, and that is, he did not love his own life unto the death. Amen. He loved God more than his own life. He trusted his Father above all else. You know, when Jesus died on the cross, one of his last words before he died was, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And it says, and he gave up the ghost. In other words, he released himself into his Father's hands. I want to tell you something. That is how we get the victory, is we put our complete trust in God. Amen. We put our faith in God. What is it that overcomes the world, even our faith? This is the victory that has overcome the world. This is what makes us conquerors of the world. It's our faith in God. Amen. It's our faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. See, possessions aren't bad. It's not bad to have possessions. You have to have nice things, you know. You know, what a blessing to have, uh, you know, a nice car. Right? What a blessing to have a, a nice place to live, you know, and, and, and good clothes to wear. Nothing wrong with that. Possessions are not evil unless they possess you. Do you hear me? You know, I think of the rich young ruler, you know. He comes to Jesus. He's wealthy. And, you know, they have their conversation. What do I need to do? He says, well, keep the commandments. And he says, which ones? And he tells him which ones. And he says, I've done all those since my youth. And it says that Jesus looked at him and loved him. And he said, one thing you lack. And he said, go sell everything you have, give it to the poor, and you shall have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. And the, the young man went away sad, it says, because he had many possessions. That's an example of someone who's possessed by their possessions. He could not release them to follow Jesus. So, you know, in the eyes of the world, that man was successful. You know, the disciples saw him, you know, they said, hey, here's a rich guy, he can help support the ministry, praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, I'm sure, you know, Judas was probably rubbing his hands. And, and when the man left, you know, man, you let him get away, Lord. <laughs> he was the one that got away. Jesus told the parable of the rich fool in, in Luke chapter 20, or chapter 12, verse 20. And, you know, this man had a successful year, bumper crops that year. And, and he, he had so much goods. It says this in verse 19. The, the man said, I will say to my soul, soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. He's rubbing his hands together. Oh, boy, early retirement. I'm going to buy Winnebago and go tour the world. You <laughs> know, all across the country. But... Verse 20 says, but God said to him, fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? I mean, the world's idea of success is to be famous, to have lots of money, to, you know, uh, all that. Uh, but you know what? It, it doesn't do us any good to have all those things if we lose our soul, if we have no faith in God, amen. amen. It's better to be poor and have faith in God than to be rich and go to hell because you have no faith. Now, you know, I don't think it's bad to be rich, but don't you think it'd be better to be wealthy and have faith in God? Yes. And use what God's given you to bless his kingdom yes. and to further his kingdom. Yes, Amen? I think so. And, you know, uh, how you get your money is important, too. You know, you don't want to get your money uh, in a way that is immoral. You know? I was talking to uh, uh, a pastor up in Oregon uh, the other day. And he said, he's pastoring on the reservation, and he says, man, these people, they're addicted to gambling. You know, and he tries to talk to him about, but pastor, I'll tithe if I win. 
<laughs> you know, I'm like, you know what? They don't have those those uh, fancy casinos because they're in the business of giving away money. Somebody wins every now and then, but I'm telling you, the house uh, gets most of it. Yeah. Amen. You know who the big winner in gambling is? You know who the big winner is? The government. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Because they don't have any expenses, they don't have to do any advertising, they do nothing. When there's a winner, they get their share. Yep. That's why they allow it. That's why they encourage it. Amen. Amen. You know, they got the, the Powerball and the lottery and all that. And you know, chances of winning it are minuscule. But if you do win it, the government's going to get a big chunk of it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just like anything else that, that you follow the money and you find out why it's done. Anyway, that's a whole other sermon. The, the point is to get your money in a good way, in an honest way, by hard work and, and faithfulness. Amen. And God will bless that. Hallelujah. So I'm going to close and I want to... Uh, just encourage you with this last thing. You know, the scripture says, whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Amen. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. It is our faith in God that, uh, that gives us the victory. And I want to read a scripture to you from John chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. It's talking about Jesus, and it says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. I'm talking about the light of God. The Bible says that Jesus is the light of the world. It says, in him was life, and the, and the life was the light of men. I want to tell you, when you get saved, the prince of darkness tries to snuff out the light that's in you. He tried to snuff out the light that was in Jesus. You know, when Jesus was born, uh, they tried to kill him. King Herod tried to kill him. Killed a whole bunch of people in Bethlehem, a, a whole bunch of babies. Two years old and under were, were slaughtered because they were trying to kill Jesus. When Jesus was baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says the Spirit led him into the wilderness and Satan tried to tempt him to sin. Why did he do that? Because he was trying to keep him from accomplishing God's purpose. And I'm telling you that you get saved and Satan is trying to snuff out the light that's in you. Amen. He's trying to shut you down. He's trying to shut down the church. He's trying to to keep us from preaching the gospel. But I want to tell you something. And as long as we're faithful to God. And we have faith in Jesus Christ. He can try as much as he wants. But he's not going to be able to do it. Hallelujah. Amen. He's not going to be able to overcome the church. Remember what Jesus said. He said I will build my church. Amen. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It's not going to work for him. The great scripture in Second uh, Corinthians chapter 4. I'm going to close with this. The Apostle Paul was writing. And you know. He, uh, Paul was a warrior for Jesus. You know that? I mean he. He went through so much. Listen to what he wrote in Second Corinthians 4. He said. Uh, in verse 6. He says. For it is God who commanded light. To shine out of darkness. It is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness. The one who said let there be light. In the very beginning. Who has shown in our hearts. To, to give the light of the knowledge. Of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And he says this. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. That the excellence of the power may be of God. And not of us. He said, we are hard pressed on every side, yet we're not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. We are struck down, but not destroyed. Satan can try as he like, but he cannot stop the light of the gospel from shining through the lives of God's people. Amen. In verse 13 and 14. 
It says, and since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believe and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. Amen. Amen. We speak the gospel. And he says, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and present us with you. Amen. You know what? No matter what the world does, even if the world kills us, we win. Amen. Jesus won. He was murdered. He was he was crucified. He died, but he still had the victory. Amen. Yes, he did. Amen. When he rose from the dead, it was glorious. <laughs> Amen. The the light that was just in the angel at the tomb uh, uh, caused the soldiers to be like dead men. They were paralyzed. They could do nothing. And I want to tell you something. Satan may try for a knockout punch. He may try to knock us down. And sometimes he might. He might land one. And we might fall. But we keep getting up. Amen. Amen. We keep getting up. I was talking to my brother William some been a couple of three years ago we we're just talking and he goes you were the most stubborn kid <laughs> you know it, it, there's 11 in my family and William was like the, he was like three three and a half years older than me then was my brother Mark next then me so I was the little one among the three and so he said he said you were stubborn I'm like what are you talking about he goes he said I would knock you down until you don't get back up and you get back up. I didn't remember. And I'm like, really? He goes, yeah, I'd knock you down until you stay down and you get back up and I'd have to knock you down again. Again and again. I read a story about a man who, who kept getting in a fight with this one guy and every time the guy would beat him up and he'd get stronger and he every time he'd see him, he'd start fighting with him again get beat up and this went on and on and on and finally the guy got tired of fighting with him and he moved <laughs> he never beat him but he never quit you know we're not gonna we're not gonna kill the devil we're not gonna execute the devil and I want to tell you something he'll never quit attacking us and we we just have to never quit getting up amen Satan will try to knock you down. And he might succeed once in a while. Might put you on your shoulder blades. <laughs> down. And they'll be good in the 10 count. But before they get to 10, you can be back up on your feet saying, okay, I'm ready. Go for another round here. And what, what this scripture is telling us here is that it is our faith in Jesus. That will sustain us. What I'm talking about is a supernatural ability to get back up. Amen. Amen. It's not. It's not us. We're not. We're not all that. You know. Actually, in truth, we're very weak. But we're not on our own. Can you say amen? amen. We have a big brother. His name is Jesus. Amen. You know, and the, the the bully Satan may come and pick on us, but guess what? We have a big brother. Who knows how to fight the devil. And he will give us the strength to not only resist, but to get up again and again and again. And finally, one day, one day, Jesus is going to come back. Hallelujah. The trumpet's going to sound. And the dead in Christ will rise. Amen. And we who are alive and remain are going to meet them together in the air. Hallelujah. We're going to go and we're going to have a, a celebration in heaven. The marriage supper of the Lamb. Glory to God. And at the end of those seven years, we're going to come back with Jesus. He's going to be on a white horse and we're going to be coming behind him on white horses. And the victory will be complete. Amen. It'll be complete. We won't even have to fight. We'll just watch our big brother take the devil down. And defeat evil once and for all. <laughs> See, we're Christians, but I want to declare to you tonight that we are also world conquerors. Yes. Amen. We can conquer the world. It presses against us, but we're going to have the victory. Amen. At the end of the day, we win. Amen. Amen.
So let's pray. Let's ask God's blessing tonight.